Hey friends, it's Heather here with the HB Book Club. Welcome back to my channel for those that have started reading me with me since the new year, and welcome to those that are just popping on. You can join anytime and jump in. So for today, we are going to do a book review for our February read, which was The Magic of Thinking Big. Now, for some, this is a disappointment because I did not do this as a live video and I did not do a live group chat, which is our goal to do for all of our books. But I will tell you why I decided to kind of just film this, put in a couple notes for you and make it an actual video with some tools for us to move forward. So as I was reading this book, honestly, I started this, I would have to say in my last chapter, I started this system. And the reason why is by about the last chapter in every book, I'm putting together some questions for us to do during book chat around that time because I have a pretty good feeling of the setting, the context, um, the content, uh, the author, the language, um, you know, the point of view from the author. So a lot of things are going on so I can come up with a list. And I like our questions and our group chat questions to be different every single um, month for that book because each book is different and the authors, their writing style is all different. So I feel like we have um, different questions that we can bring to the table and discuss. Well, for this book, being that it was um, such a motivational book, I mean, there was so many different quotes and ideas and, and statements and learning tools that were all motivational. I thought, wow, th there's so much that will actually be really hard to organize my thoughts and sit down and do a full book review with you live because there was a lot there was for me this was for me personally i thought gosh how can i i cannot do a book re review and have it so concise and ni nice and organized when i feel like my thoughts were running in a lot of different directions meaning like well i got that and i learned this but nothing i couldn't i i hope this makes sense but it was like i was having a hard time recalling everything because I just felt like there was so much in this book, but a little bit repetitive, but yet I needed to separate it all. I hope this makes sense. This is the first time, so this is why I really felt like I wanted to do um, this book review and tape it first. So here's what I did. I, I sat down and I started thinking of questions, but then I started thinking, when I started thinking of the questions, all my questions ended up in like, different categories, which I thought was really interesting. So what I did is got my handy little highlighters out. And if you can see, there's are highlighted with different colors. And so I took the orange and I said, the orange is part of the book that I can act on or I can apply something to that really stood out to me. And you will notice in the magic of thinking big, there are lots of applications, lots of applications. What application stuck out to me? When do I need to use that application? And when can I pull this book off my bookshelf and say, okay, I got to remember some of these applications. How would I ever find this in a book that's got all kinds of motivational advice? So you'll see in a minute, which when we get to the book review, I have my highlighted orange tabs here. Okay, I'm loving this, loving this. So again, Orange is for everything that is important that I feel me personally needs to act on or, you know, apply something to my life. Number, um, number, color green is character development. Lots and lots of character development in this book. I will share with you my definition of character development when we look at some of my green tabs. You'll see where that jumped right out to me. So we'll save that. Uh, pink was faith related. Anything faith related that really, um, you know, helps us keep our Christian book club, which is, um, you know, I love reading Christian reads, but not all the time are we. I mean, we're going to dive into, you know, some other viewpoints, but I feel like being that this is a Christian book club, we can find the spiritual part of some aspects, even if the book is not necessarily faith-based or by some Christian motivational author. I think we can put our spin in it, and I love that. I think we can learn from every avenue. So I am using pink for something that can be faith-related or something that's specifically faith-related, but in the upcoming books, say it's not a 
a directly a faith related book, but there's something that's prompting me that says, oh, that reminds me of God can work all things for the good in Romans 10. So I'll use a pink highlighter to separate it, but understand that author's thought on that point, but coming from my perspective, if that makes sense. It just helps me organize. When I read, I like to, and, and again, that is why I love books that are, are um, ah, teaching me something, faith-related, motivating me, something where I'm going to apply. I do love those books. But I will say this. This is a sidebar moment. I'm, I've already started our March read. Oh, my gosh, guys. I've already started our March read and The Serial Killer's Daughter. And I am so lost in her words and her story that, as a matter of fact, just this morning, I was so lost with my coffee in her book that I actually felt like I was on the road trip in the car with her grandpa. She's talking about how they're going, you know, eating Cheez-Its. And I just felt like I was there. I was picturing the whole thing, completely different type of read than a motivational book. So I'm liking that my, that my mind is going to a different place as I read. Very interesting for myself to real to realize how I can settle in a little bit different in a book. So I will be um, tagging this book a little differently, not so much like this. This book has so much information in it that I really had a hard time just drawing up questions for you guys right away and then doing a book chat. I thought, gosh, and this was so laid into the book. So really, that's why I was like, oh gosh, I, I want to tag and learn this system, reread the book. I actually did a reread this whole week, and that is why you're getting this later review. But I feel like it's going to be awesome, and it's going to set us up really great for our future books, and it's going to be kind of like a staple for us in um, moving forward in our book reviews. And so I just think this is going to be so helpful um, if, we, if we decide to join this, if you want to do this, or whatever. So let me move on. So pink all pink here and you can see in this motivate in this motivational book i only have okay one or two pink tabs where something faith related was spoken or something about jesus or god or the scripture was actually in this book so that was my little tabs on that and then purple purple is it caught my eye. It caught my attention. I loved the writing style. It was personal for me. I identified with it. Um, so that could be a quote. It could be a story. It could be a statement. Um, something that just was like, I am there right now, or I've been there. I get it. I like the way he, he kind of, he described it. And I feel like I can put my words to my story through what he just taught me. So very personal, and I have some of that in here. I actually have a lot of purple in here for that. Yellow. Yellow for me, and yellow could be this for you, is anything HB Ministries related. Now, HB Ministries is Heather Baxter Ministries, which is my overall YouTube channel. So I do HB Book Club, but I also have HB Bible Study and Resources, which is where I teach all my online Bible study classes, and I'm moving forward in 2019, and I'm going to be doing not a podcast, but a, vlog, a vlogcast where I'm bringing a message, an inspirational message, or something for us to believe, behold, and become all God's created us to be. And so if I read something in a book that has really, really jumped out to me that I feel can go in another part of the ministry, another part of my YouTube station, then I have that. Um, tagged off here and then in my work journal here on my desk where I'm taking notes and thinking of different things and different topics or different sessions or different whatever series that I could teach this is something that's helping me I'm also writing a second book right now and there was a few things that jumped out in here for me on that so that's yellow personal um, work-based or something that I'm doing with my my personal giftings so let me just go over the system again um, again, this is in my planner, and I'm also putting this in all of my books, this little chart. And then I just went to the store the other day, and because I developed this system at home, I was coloring my tabs in as I was going, okay? So these aren't even, these are just some tabs that I had, and I was coloring them to the color. So I just recently went to the store and purchased um, 
the tabs and the colors and I have them ready for my next book when I when I feel like, you know, and not every book am I going to do that. Right now, honestly, in Carrie's book, the book that we're in in March, I have not been feeling like I need to tag. It's a different type of read. I'm getting lost in the word and in her story and in her autobi autobiography and it's just different. It's different than this book and I think that's why I had a hard time is that I had to teach myself this system first because we have a lot of motivational books on our um, our whole chart for 2019. And so I want to move forward in the future with still giving you a list of questions, but then for us to come together during our chat, we can have a color-coded um, chart system that looks like this. And I will go ahead and I will put this chart system right under this video so you can go ahead and make this and stick it in your next book. So remember, orange is something important that we can apply and act on. It's like it's like the application. They give us a tool. This book was full of tools. Uh, green is character development. Pink is faith related. Purple is it caught my eye personally. Um, something really personal here that hit home. And yellow is specific to my ministry, my job, something specific to you that you can apply somewhere else that, that could be a learning tool. So with that in mind, we are going to now do the book review. So please forgive me that I didn't do this live. I feel so much better that I, I'm teaching you this system first. Like I feel really relieved that I did this. I really, I could have probably popped on and, and, and did a video um, way back and then did the review the right way, but this did not, honestly, I just did this like four days ago. And you'll notice that because I posted on it um, on our um, HB uh, Book Club page on Facebook. And for those that are not on the HB Book Club, come join us over on Facebook. Um, there's a great group of us there and we just inspire each other to stay reading. So let me jump in and let me first tell you some of the questions that I wrote down because I think that's important. Um, and again, for our March read, I will give you the list of questions a couple weeks before we do our review because this was different and I'm teaching you tools and doing the book review. I didn't do it this time. So forgive me, but we're learning in this video. We're also learning. So here are the questions that I wrote down initially before I even came up with this system. Okay, these were the questions. And then I was like, gosh, I just, there's so much in here. I'm, I'm not walking away feeling like, I've really reviewed this book and it's settling right. After the system, oh my gosh, I just feel like uh, I, I could pick up this book and if anybody asked a question, I know exactly where to go with it. It's just so much better. So um, number one is what did what I did not like about the book? Okay, that was one of my first questions. So again, if you hear this question, please comment below. That's how we're going to do our live chat. What was something that you did not like about this book? Here's something I did not like about it. Okay, it was the magic of thinking big. And he acquired all kinds of secrets for success, but there was too much that I had to separate them all because I felt like they were all coming together. And I wasn't walking away being able to untangle the spider web, if this makes sense and figure out where that piece of web was directing me to. It was just all coming together, so it was just a mesh of think big. And I wasn't able to pull out the one point that I needed to. Now in the beginning, it was like that, but toward the middle and the end of the book, it, it was just so much, and I, I couldn't pull it apart. And But now with the system, I see character development. I mean, with my system now, I see character development. I see something I can act on and apply. I see something faith-related. I see the part that jumped out to me, and I see the stuff that can help me personally in my ministry or my, my dream job. So that is, I just, I personally needed to separate it, and it was something that um, really helped me, and I will use it forever. So that's what I didn't like about the book, but then it taught me to break my book down differently. So I learned from it. So tell me in the comments below, what did you not like about the book? Number two, what did I like about the book? Well, I just answered that. I learned an antidote system. I learned a whole new system. I'm hoping you're seeing these pretty colors. Are you guys seeing them? Because that really excites me. It's really pretty on my nightstand. I look really serious here around the house because even my daughter was like, whoa, mom, you're like serious reader. I'm like, I know. My husband's like, wow, it just looks pretty too. I feel so organized. I feel so good. Like, I love it. So that's what I liked about the book. Felt proud. And I felt like my book looked pretty. All right. 
the next question. So tell me what you liked about the book. Maybe it's you're liking this new system too. Maybe you're going to go back through now and, and try to tab some parts. Number three, the author's background, the tone and um, the viewpoint of the author's writing. Here's the kicker. Are you guys ready? I should say ladies. All right. Here's the kicker. The tone of the writing. Now, I did not know this when I when I put this book on our list. I did not know that the copyright and the tone that this was written was 1959. Ladies, there was no media. There was no cell phones. Like, okay, it really put into perspective a lot of things, a lot of things, a lot of his viewpoints and everything. I will save that for the review part when we hit some of these tabs. You'll see what I mean. Because just think about that. No social media, no Instagram, no Facebook, nothing. No texting. I mean, telephones were still on the, I mean, come on. 1959, completely different tone. So I had to keep that in mind. Um, so it was done very well. He was a thinker. Um, he used just his thinking. And I think we miss out on thinking big now because we are pushed by media to help us to think big unless, and, and unless we use our own mind to learn to apply things and get that bigger aspect of what we need to be thinking or where we need to be moving or what we need to be applying so we can grow bigger. And he knew that because he just used his mind at all times. So I think that that is very, very important to understand that his influence was silenced by media and it all came from within and we missed that. So that was really, 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 really huge for me to understand. So anything that jumped out to you about the author, the background, tell me if you caught on to the date and what you thought about with that because I think that's interesting. Number four, point of view, who's telling it, male. I always like to know if it was male or female. So I kind of looked at, you know, he brought women into this though. He, I watched it. it. He had, you know, working women and he was talking about that, which was interesting with the timing and the dates there. So I, I kind of looked at that, but who was telling it? I always like to know. So it was a man. So did you feel anything from his point of view being a male? Um, it didn't really jog me in, in either direction. Uh, number five, the setting. Okay, that again, where does this take place? Again, 1959. And in any book, the setting can be different. Like when I'm doing my autobiography with um, Carrie, my setting is going to be, that question is going to look really different. The setting in this book just really jumped out to me. Um, it, it, it was something that really, I'm still, I'm still kind of laughing about it because just the mindset of having no media and, and, I am influenced so much by influencers. His mind and his thoughts influenced him. He got to a place where he was able to quiet down and make all these applications for us based on just him thinking alone. And I think we all have that in us. We really do. And we need to learn to quiet media so we can find that bigger place inside of us. And so I, I just found that, you know, our settings important. I was just looking at like, our settings. Things can take place in our life, but look at the setting there and look what took place in his life. Okay. Um, the next one was, uh, what is that? Um, uh, okay. I have down the question is what was this theme or message that you got from this video? My theme and my message was it was a motivational book, 100%, 100%. So did you get anything out of it um, and what? What was your theme? What was your viewpoint on the book? Like what theme jumps out? When you shut this book, what is it? And you know, of course, big, big motivational book. Um, the other thing is, is um, personal effect. If you were to walk away from this book and be able to pull one word out, one word, what would that word be? Like, what's the one thing that you can think of? And I have to be honest, even though the title is big, I would still walk away with big because he had some really big thoughts. He had some really big applications. He had um, some really, 
big ideas about character development. And he used the word big in a lot of areas. So I would have to say that I, I liked the word big. It, it, it just matched the title perfect. So is there a word um, that would jump out to you? When you close this book, is there something that stimulated, is there something that's still sitting with you? You know, what is it? Leave it in the comments below. I also want to be honest with this. I will tell you that probably I started picking up interest in the last half of the book. It was probably my favorite. And that's when I really realized, whoa, I got to back up. Did I fall asleep? And look at, honestly, I don't have a lot tagged right here in this section of the book. No, but I thought that Toward the end, mid-end, it was boring. I just felt like repetition, I don't know. He, he was just going into programs and people and work and self-respect and I did just different things. And it just was like, blah, blah, blah. And I, I was getting sleepy, I will be honest, in that part of it. Um, but then it picked up again. And then all of a sudden I said, wait a minute, why did I fall asleep? I got to review this whole thing. I'm not walking away from this book the way I want to walk away. So I hope that helps. Um, but that's my truth. So did you fall apart, asleep in any part? Did you like the beginning? Um, was there the beginning a little stronger? What about the middle? And tell me a little bit about the end. The end was absolutely the best for me. You can see that I have that marked. Okay, so with those are some of the questions that I have down that I actually wanted to ask you. But for now, let's go ahead and let me just pull a couple things, a couple things. You can use these color tabs and down below in the comment section, maybe you can use the color and, and go ahead and answer. So for right now, orange. Orange was something that I personally need to act on or apply. So I'm just going to, not going to do all of them. I would love to hear what areas you feel like you want to act on or apply. Let me go. Let's just see. I'm going to randomly open it up and we're going to go right here to my marked orange and I have it. Oh, oh yeah. I like, I remember this. I liked this. My marked orange here and I even highlighted, I don't know if you can see, I even highlighted that area. So something I want to apply, it says, how are you or how are you feeling today? Respond with good words just wonderful. Thanks and you? Um, say great or fine. I'm doing awesome. How are you doing? And you and smile and really get into it. Begin to feel wonderful and begin to feel bigger. I loved that and I have been applying that. I did it today when I worked with a client. I am loving it. It is so funny how you're going to win the feeling of somebody else by your tone. Huge, huge, huge. And so it says right here, you can develop big thinkers. You can develop the word big around you by your vocabulary and how you respond. So I'm applying that and let me know what are you applying? So let's do another one. I'm going to pull right here, this orange. Oh yeah. This one, let's take action. Now in a quick recap, put these successful building principles to work. Get a clear fix on where you want to go and create an image yourself 10 years from now. Do you see that board behind me? That is my vision board. I already have this done and I'm excited. If you have not put a vision board together, check my video right above. I'm going to put the link there. I have a whole series on how to dream big and how to make a vision board. So you can actually learn to apply all of this by watching my series. How awesome is that? just saying freebie for you. You can have your vision board going. You can apply that and you can take action. I'll help you break it down in smaller steps. So I thought that was cool how to apply that. Um, let's see. Another one that I have for applying is uh, take time out. Loved this. Take time out. And it says um, to confer with yourself and tap your supreme thinking power. Now I want, I put that down and that's something I want to apply because I want to take time out and think on my own and not so much be motivated by people on Facebook or other. And, you know, I, I listen to a lot of pad, podcasts. I listen to a lot of motivational speakers, and I love that. I think it's important. I'm a motivational speaker. Um, but my motivation and my messages are developed in my quiet time. All of them are developed in my quiet time. My, my Bible reading time, all of that. And so I think it's important that 
we constantly apply that take time out, shut off all social media. So that is something I wanted to remind myself of and put that in there. All right, let's jump to green for the sake of time. Where am I at? 25 minutes. That's okay. We're doing good. Um, green, green, green. All right, I'm just going to pick any green. So I have a lot of green, which is character development. Let's go to the beginning of the book because remember, ooh, okay, green. This was the area where he was talking about excusitis, excusitis, the failure disease. I put, and each time the victim makes the excuse, the excuse becomes embedded deeper within his subconscious. Be careful of excuses. Vaccinate yourself against excusitis, the disease of failures. I thought that was a great character development. It was a statement just reminding me of it. So I, I put that in there. Um, over here, uh, page 14, I, I put green and I circled it. A person is a product of his own thoughts. Boom, character development. What am I thinking today? See, loving these tabs, love them. All right, let's go to pink, faith related. How many pinks do I have? And I went hardcore on this. I wanted pink only Jesus Bible something said here. So I found only one. If you found another one, let me know where you could see it. I found it on page 295. It says, check the lives of the great religious leaders and you'll find each of them spent considerable time alone. Bingo, yes, Jesus did. Moses did. Moses went to the mountain. I'm reading the Exodus right now in the morning. Uh, that's the, the book of the Bible that I'm in in my quiet time. And Moses goes to get alone and quiet himself so he can receive the presence of God and really just quiet his heart in order to deal with all the other people that he has to go back to. The ones complaining and, and, and getting angry um, over you know their situation in life. Well listen, as women, we have people that we have to answer to. Our kids, our husbands, if, if you're married or your workplace. Your time alone builds you up to deal with all your characters, to be the leader that you need to be. And that jumped out to me. Moses frequently was alone, often for long periods of time. So were Jesus. And then they went to say in Buddha and Confucius and Mohammed and Gandhi, I don't care about them. I just like that the religious leaders and they spoke of Moses and Jesus and that made me happy. So very, very, very good faith related point. And that's green. Purple caught my eye all about me. Like, woo, I have a few. I actually, how many do I have? Let's count how many purples I have. One, two, three, four. I have five. 